Wild Care's mission is to provide people a place to bring wild animals that are struggling to survive with the whole goal of releasing healthy animals back into the wild. We've been doing this 28 years. We take in 5,000 wild animals a year. We just received a call from a lady that is in the tornado path and there's bulldozers at her place and they're knocking down the remains of all the trees. And it just so happens that one of the trees that they're bulldozing has got a nest of baby owls in it. Um, and if we bulldoze them, obviously the babies are gonna get injured. And so she's trying to save them, which we're all in favor of helping. Now normally, if it was normal conditions, um, we would encourage them to leave the owls exactly where they are, the parents will take care of them, and that way we aren't taking moms from babies. But what we're finding in the devastation of the tornadoes, that there really isn't a family unit left. Um, there's no way of knowing that the parents actually survived the tornadoes, um, and whether the parents would actually come back to that nest site, because it's going to look so much different now than when they first built their nests there. So in order to save these little owls, we're gonna to go to the site and see if we can retrieve them so that these little guys stand a chance of surviving today. The lady I spoke to on the phone was rather definite and she told the guy with the backhoe that he was going to go to other trees and leave that tree alone until she can get this worked out. Um, so I'm hoping that he listened to her um, but like I said, she seemed pretty definite and firm. So um, if he's a smart man, he moved to the next tree. I'm sure these guys are under tremendous pressure to just get the job done. So we love it when somebody will take the time to try to rescue a little wild one or any animal that's in need because it's taking time away from their job and their stress that they have. So we really do appreciate that they're trying to work with us to try to save these little owls. We have had some calls most of the time. I think she's sorting mail. No, she's not. Yes, she is. <laughs> One or the other. Um, most of the times with the phone calls that we're getting, um, people have been willing to catch the animals and either bring them to us or get a volunteer to bring them to us or to the Oklahoma City Animal Shelter. So we haven't had to actually go out to sites very much, um, which is good for us because right now we have about 700 animals on the property. 50 of them came from the storm. And so in order for me to actually leave the property, that means there's several hours of my time that's going to be taken away from the care of the animals. Um, so a lot of times it's really helpful if we can get a volunteer um, or someone at the scene or whoever to either bring us the little ones or get them to the Oklahoma City Animal Shelter, which is one of our drop-off locations. The longer we're out from days away from the tornado, the harder it is for these animals to actually survive. So it's becoming really critical to get these guys as soon as possible. Oh gosh. I am looking for 16803 Creek Valley. 166 something. 166 is that yeah. Yeah, probably a little bit further off. We're going. <laughs> Thanks guys. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is hope to gosh that there's some way that we can get these little guys reunited with his parents, but I'm suspicious that that's not going to be an option. Um, so we're going to look at that first. If that's not an option, then we're going to go ahead and try to remove them from their nest. And I'm not sure how high up the nest is or what part of the tree is still there and in existence or what's going on. Um, and then try to figure out how to get them safely out of that location. If there's nearby trees and it just so happens that that was the one tree in the area that got demolished and there's nearby trees that we might be able to uh, make a makeshift nest that is kind of undisturbed in that area, that would be great. But if it's not and there's just total devastation, we don't stand much of a chance. But we see some animals that survive some phenomenal things and are tucked in areas that you would never even think of. It wasn't in the trees. On the ground? But you see the, see the big white trailer? There's a big, big old oak tree back there that fell over. 
I caught him with a fishing net out of that dead snag. Okay, and you think there's only one in there? Uh, yeah. Okay, show me where you found him if that's all right. Okay, so where'd you find this little guy? He was walking up the branch right here. So I don't know if there's something back down there or not. See, and there's a hollow there where the little guy could have come from. Because those little guys there a lot of times will use cavities. And part of that tree has a hollow in it also. But trying to put him back in this nest isn't an option. Um, because we aren't really sure where the nest was. And for the mother to be hunting and all of this rubble and the branches being down and trying to find prey species on the ground underneath all of this, she doesn't stand a chance. Um, and we don't even have any idea whether she's alive or not. Okay, well, let's go back and take a look at that little kid and see what what we're dealing with. We'll get him fed when we get back to the facility. Look like his right wing is pretty. Yeah, we've got a pretty badly damaged right wing. Okay, so this is a young barred owl, and I'm going to guess she's about six weeks of age. Yeah, he is. That popping noise is like a dog growling. That's the way an owl's going to let us know that he doesn't appreciate us being in his space. Yeah. Easy, yeah. easy. They're about probably, probably 45 days old. They're usually coming three. Yeah, and you've only spotted this one? Yeah, and we're going to keep a lookout for another one. But uh, the others probably survived the storm. What happened to her wing? His wing is broken. Hi, sweetheart. Okay, well, we're going to take him back to wild care. We'll take a closer look at the wing. Uh, thank you, sir. So will you give us news about them? Yeah, um, what we're going to do, there's information about us, so you have our contact information. And you can call and let us know, um, ask us how the little bird owl is that came from the Hero Tornado. Well, I have a question. Sure. When you got, when he's fixed, will you let him go out here? Um, we will actually take animals all over the state. So at this point, I can't say where exactly we'll let him go. Um, but we definitely will um, consider putting him back into his home turf. You did a great job saving him, son. Thank you. Okay, let's get him home and see what we can do and get some fluids in him and see what we can do to help him. If there's any wildlife at all, we'll let you know. Let us know. Yeah. I'll let them know, too. Yeah, the girls over there. Yeah, that's we what we're We appreciate you so much. No Thank problem. You Thanks for everybody's efforts. All right. You okay. know what his Indian name is? What's his Indian name? We de Co. We de Co. We de Co. It stands for? Owl. We de Co. Yeah. Thank you very much. We will take yeah. good care of him. Uh, all right. Thank you, guys. guys. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you all for coming in. But Al doesn't stand a chance. The wing's very badly broken. It's starting to fuse. The end of the wing lost blood supply, and it's rotten. So the only thing we're going to be able to do with this Al is send him to heaven. And here's a family that tried very hard in the situation that they're dealing with to save this one life. And I didn't have to have the heart to tell them that there wasn't a chance. So we'll take her home and send her to heaven politely. Um, and that's all what we can do for this one little owl. Just heartbreaking. That is not what we wanted to find on this. We wanted to find some nice, healthy babies that there was a chance. Not this rescue. But I'm convinced that those people are attuned enough to the nature that's around them that if they find other wild animals, they will call us. Red-headed, or red-bellied woodpecker right out the window. See him? People that find these wild animals, until they actually have that animal in their hand and they look into its eyes, they don't have that connection. It's just wild animals that live out there. 
But once that connection is made, um, and it's incredibly strong, and they really want to do the very best possible to help save that one little life. And it really touches me, these people that have lost their house and everything. And here they're going out of their way to bring me a nest of cottontail rabbits that are about ready to be bulldozed because of the big equipment. And they, by gosh, they want to save those bunnies uh, because that's what they can do. And that's the order they can bring in their life to do something good in the world is to save that little group of bunnies. You just got to love that caring and compassion that someone has when they've lost everything. height in the air. The good parts is, you know, we saw that little woodpecker and we saw the little squirrel trying to, you know, get himself situated. We saw the Mississippi kite still circling in the air, so I'm sure there was hundreds of animals that no longer are around the world, but those guys are. <laughs> 